This is part one in our series of lectures on section 4.5 dealing with images and inverse images of sets. In this lecture we give the working definitions of images and inverse images of sets and we give a simple example. So, so far we've only viewed functions as acting on points. Uh, if we give ourselves an x in the domain of a function then we've talked about what the image of that x is. But it's also possible for a function to act on sets instead of just simply points. So if f is a function from set a to set b and we give ourselves a subset x of our domain then we can define what we mean by the image of x and if we give ourselves a subset of the codomain we can talk about the inverse image of that set. And once we do that, this image of x is going to be a certain subset of b, and f inverse of y is going to be a certain subset of the domain a. Now, as we've seen in earlier lectures, f inverse is always a relation, but it isn't a function unless f is one-to-one -one and onto. But we can still talk about f inverse of y. Uh, it turns out, even if f inverse isn't a function. So let's look at the actual working definition. First we'll look at the working definition of image of a set. So we start with a function f from a from set a to set b. We give ourselves a subset of the domain. So x is a subset of the domain. And we're going to define what we mean by the image of that x. We call it f of x. And it is given in set builder notation as follows. It's the set of all y in the codomain such that there exists an x in the set x. So it's not merely in the domain A, but it's in the set that we're taking the image of, such that f of x is equal to that y. Another way of expressing the same thing is to say that it's the set of all things of the form f of x in the codomain as x varies over all of the points of x. But typically when you're trying to prove something about f of x, to say that y is an element of this is to say that. It is to say that there exists an x in that underlying set x such that y is equal to f of x. Now let's look at the definition of inverse image of a set. Once again, we have a function from set A to set B. This time we give ourselves a subset of the codomain B. So y is a subset of the codomain B then we're going to define what we mean by f inverse of y. f inverse of y is a certain subset of the domain, so it's the set of all x in the domain such that, and here's the condition that puts x in the inverse image, it's that there exists a y in this underlying set y that we're taking the inverse image of, such that y is equal to f of x. So it's the set of all x such that there exists a y in the underlying set y such that y is equal to f of x. We call it the inverse image of y. So to say that an element x is in the inverse image is to say this. There exists a y in that set y such that y is equal to f of x. So here's a simple example for you. We'll do slightly more difficult one in the subsequent lectures. Uh, let's take A to B, this discrete set, 1, 2, 3, 4. B is this set here, and I'm going to define a function from A to B. Uh, 1 maps to 6, 2 maps to 15, 3 maps to 6, and 4 maps to 9. So here are two things for you to calculate. This is the image of set 1, 2, 3. This is the inverse image of 6, 9. So 1, 2, 3 is sitting in the domain, and 6, 9 is sitting in the codomain. So to take the image of 1, 2, 3, you just simply take f of each of the things in that set. So you calculate f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and you put it together in a set. To take f inverse of 6, 9, you have to look at all of the things in your domain that map into that set. So look at all the things that map to 6 and look at all the things that map to 9. So see if you can figure out 
and you, using proper set notation, proper listing notation, calculate these two things. So f, f of 1, 2, 3 is what? Well, f of 1 is 6, f of 2 is uh, 15, and f of 3 is 6 again. So together we get 6 and 15, and so there is the image. It is 615. You'll notice it's a certain subset of the codomain. What about the other one? f inverse of 6, 9. Well, we have to look at all of the things that map into that set. So 1 maps into that set because 1 maps to 6. 2 does not, but 3 maps to 6 also, so we include 3. And 4 maps also into that set because it maps to 9. So 1, 3, 4, those are all the things that map into this set, and therefore that's the inverse image of that set.